dinner. Stop punching me, David. Stop. Nate, stop. Stop. So before we eat, and I know we don't normally do this, but why don't we go around the table and just say five or six things that we're thankful for this year, okay? What? <clears throat> you know what, I think I'll start. What I'm thankful for this year is a great family, credit cards, uh, the house, uh, nice clothes, uh, Neiman Marcus and Nordstrom. I was just thinking more meaningful things. Meaningful things. Uh, kids, what about you? Five or six things. Go ahead. Okay, I'll go, I'll go. Um, family, um, cars, and uh, HD TV. Kids? Can we eat now? Come on guys, we can do this. Five or six things that we're thankful for. I mean, it's not that hard. Just Video think games, of- violence, the band, cradle of filth, techno, distraction, piracy, and the internet. Good, those are good things to be thankful for. Darcy? Can we eat if I do it? After David goes. God. Green beans, red stuff, rolls, mashed potatoes, stuffing. Well done, David. Okay. I'm thankful for, like, the fact that God lets us live and breathe and he gives us beautiful lives and art and relationships. And even though we don't deserve it, he showers his mercy on us year after year. Even though we ignore him, he takes care of us. He loves us. And also the car and the stuff and the whatever. Amen, okay, well, let's eat. It's couches, porches, and kitchen tables. It's stories shared and moments worth remembering. It's hoping and praying and taking chances. It's jokes and laughter and shoulders to cry on. It's questions and answers and I don't knows. It's knowing you don't have to figure it all out by yourself. It's messy and imperfect. It's giving and serving and growing better together. It's life and we weren't meant to do it. Life is better together. Join a small group today. Giving is easy and safe with our giving platform powered by SecureGive. Giving can be done from anywhere with your computer, tablet, or your mobile device. To give, simply go to the church's website, create a new account, or log in with your existing account. Simply select one-time or recurring gift. Select your donation amount, enter your payment info, and then confirm your information. Visit our website and click on the giving button to learn more. Maybe you're an iOS or Android user. If so, you have an additional opportunity to streamline your giving with the free SecureGive app. Simply search SecureGive in the App Store or Google Play Market. Once downloaded, open the app and search our church name to save as your home organization. Just like with online giving, you can create a new account or use your existing SecureGive account to log in, give, and connect with us. But wait, did you also know there is now a way to participate in generosity in a way that's as easy as texting a friend? With text to give you can give using your mobile device by following these three easy steps. Number one, text the keyword and amount you'd like to give to our church's text to give number. Number two, follow the series of prompts and set up your secure give text to give account. Here, choose your desired payment method. And finally, number three, save the number as a contact in your phone for future use. Text to give only takes seconds to use and is the perfect way to connect with our ministry through giving. Everything has a starting point. You had a starting point. 
Faith has a starting point as well. For most of us, we began to believe something about God as children, and then we became adults, and it didn't work anymore. And there was this growing gap between what we were told as children and what we experienced as adults. Sometimes adults need a new starting point. So we're gonna hit the restart button. What if we'd never heard any of those stories? Where would we start? What if we didn't know anything? Where would we start? Because starting off with faith as a child is very different than starting off with faith as an adult.
Good morning. Welcome. We're so glad you're here with us today. And uh, we just want to sing together a little bit this morning.
Well, good morning and welcome. We're so glad you're here. It's always nice to have people in person, especially you ventured out in this snowstorm that looked like all of a sudden like, wow, it was like crazy. You couldn't see and so now it's the sun shining, so it's beautiful. Uh, welcome online. If you're online joining us, it's great to have you. So a couple things coming up. We got a brand new series that's going to be starting in a couple weeks and that's called The Gift and so that's going to take us into the Christmas season. Our Christmas Eve Eve service, that's our, been our tradition now for a bunch of years, is uh, that will be Friday night, so it will be at 6.30 on that Friday night, and then we'll re-air that on Sunday, so we, we just, so you can plan ahead, but the most important date what you have on your calendars, if you don't have it on, is December 6th, it's a Tuesday night, we're asking you to rearrange your calendar, we want you to be here, we're going to share a meal here at the North Point facility here. And we're going to have community together, and then I'm going to share uh, where we're going because there's been a lot of stuff going on over the past few years, and now it's time to let's talk about wh what's our next step. And I'm excited about it, and I hope you will be too, but I'm just looking forward to, to sharing so what we've been going through and then what we have to look forward to. So make sure you're here and be with us here. So today is the last day to drop these things off. So if you are online watching us and you're in the area, you want to get down here before 11 because that's when they're going out the door. So we're going to drop these off. We've got a bunch back there now. If you forgot, if you're out of the area, you can always go up on Operation Christmas Child's website and you can find the, the drop-off location. You can just take them down there yourselves because there's still some of those locations are still collecting tomorrow. So you're able to do that if you still didn't get any boxes together. This, um, this week obviously is Thanksgiving, so I hope if you're traveling, just play it safe, be careful, give yourself extra time. It is the busy, busiest travel season of the year, that, that thanks, especially that Wednesday, that Thanksgiving, um, going into Thanksgiving, so be careful out there. Thank you for your support of this ministry, and you guys really do make everything happen here, and I, I know I'm especially grateful for it as, we, as we're moving forward and doing some new things because it is your support that's really going to help all that to happen. So thank you so much. There's a couple ways to give. If you're a person, there's the envelope. If you're online, we got Secure Give. Great, easy to click on and get there. So thank you so much for doing that. If, you, if you're newer to us and our community, we want to say, hey, thanks and welcome. Thanks for being a part of, of, our, of our family here. And we have a book for you. It's called How Good is Good Enough by Andy Stanley. And we want to get that in your hands. So just let us know and we'll get that mailed out to you. Let's pray together. Father, we want to thank you so much for this season. We want to thank you for just what you're doing in our lives. And Lord, if we're honest, um, there's probably things that we want you to do in our lives still. There's things on our hearts and our minds that we would, we would just love that you would answer those prayers. So whatever those are, Lord, we, we lift them up to you right now. But Lord, as we go into this week, may we be very thankful for the country we live in, for the family we have, for the friends we have, for jobs we have, for money in the bank, food in the fridge. And Lord, although at times we may need more or want more, we are so truly blessed. So thank you for, for blessing us the way you have. Lord, as we send these boxes out today, along with thousands of churches across this nation, around this world, may these tens of thousands, millions of boxes that are going out, may they get in the hands of kids that will change their lives. Not just the toys and the goodies inside, but, but may the message that's put inside here with that, may the churches that are distributing these around the world May they have an impact in these kids' lives, that they may find your son, Jesus Christ. And may he change their life forever. Thanks, Lord, for this morning that we get to share together. Thanks for a place we get to meet. And may you touch our hearts and our minds in a, just in a big way today. We ask this to Jesus Christ. Amen.
Well, how many of you are hosting Thanksgiving dinner at your house? Anybody? Oh, okay, at least a couple here, huh? Uh, so I guess the rest of you are going elsewhere, right? Um, I know we're going to be going elsewhere. So what, what do we normally do? I don't know about you guys, but if you're hosting, you're usually making a list of all the stuff that you need to prep. If you're going somewhere, you're making a list of all the stuff you have to bring because we're already making that list. Uh, one thing you want on your list for next week, though, definitely is we're not meeting in person on Sunday. So we're, we're taking the whole weekend off. We'll be, lot, we'll be online only. So make sure that's on your list, too, to not come to hear live, okay? And, uh, but, you know, you got, got a bunch of things on our list. I know we were talking through the menu with the kids and going to be making stuffed mushrooms. I don't know how many like stuffed mushrooms couple. Some of you are like, yeah, I, don't know. <laughs> uh, I like stone mushrooms. I think they're great. Um, so that's one of our things on our list. We're making this list here, trying to get everything ready. But now, how many of you are list people? Some of you are like, I'm not even a list person. I don't make any list. How many of you are list people? You like to make lists? Okay, there's a couple that are willing to admit that, okay? The rest of you, you need to get to be, write things on a list. It helps, you know, or get the app or whatever. I got a to-do list app with, I got like 100 lists on there. It's great, you know? And uh, not that you remember what's on the list, but, but you know there's one list that we all keep, whether you're a list person or not. And it's that list that you don't have to have it written down because it's right here. And it's that list that it comes to mind at certain times and certain things on that list come to mind. And it's not things, it's people. Is that person who did something or said something and they hurt us and it's hard to let it go. And we hold on to it. And what happens is all of a sudden we see that friend or what used to be a friend who gossiped about us. And all of a sudden those things come back to mind. Or you start, I don't know, you drive by the place and... Or you're remembering something and all of a sudden you remember back when, man, when you were at school and you got bullied. Or when you were a teenager, you got bullied. Or a co-worker who stole from you. Or a brother who lied to you. And we keep these lists of, of people who have hurt us. And it's not like we want to, but we do. We hold on to it. And we try to forget. And sometimes it seems like we're over it and then something happens and it triggers that memory and we just hold on. Welcome back to our series called The Grudge. And last week we talked about the small grudges. That small grudges grow. And the more you hold on to a grudge and you keep adding to that grudge, that grudge gets bigger and bigger. And we talked about how there's an action that's done to us. And then we react. And the more that grudge grows, the bigger the reaction is. But in between the action and the reaction, there's this gap of how we're going to respond. And we get to choose what we put in that gap. That's our choice. So when something happens and we react, it's a choice of how we're going to react to that. And last week we talked about what we need to do is we need to choose to fill that gap with love. Next week what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a big grudge that I think all of us have had it one time, whether you know it or not, and, but it affects us. And it has definitely affected you at one point in your life or another. Next week, we'll talk about that. This week, we're going to talk about is the list, the, the, the grudge list that we have. And sometimes they're really small offenses and, and just, if you just can't let go of it, you know? And other times they're big ones, but we've been betrayed We've had someone steal our money or, or an investment or our time or whatever, and we just can't let it go because they lied to us and they stole from us and we're not going to let it go. And the thing is, you were hurt. At somewhere along the line, you were hurt and, and it's hard. You know, maybe it was that roommate in college or maybe that roommate when you first move out of your house, mom and dad. I moved in with my brother. We moved in. We got our first apartment together. But, you know, maybe some of you had a roommate where, or it could have been your brother, you know, where it just, it didn't go well. And, and all of a sudden, like, that roommate, you know, here you thought you were close friends and you thought, like, this is going to be great. We're probably going to be, like, friends for life. And then they stole from you. Or they lied to you. Some of you have had a friend that 
betrayed a trust. You shared something with them. You thought it was just between the two of them. Next thing you know, all these other people know, and you're like, man, I thought this was just you and me. Some of you have had a spouse that has betrayed you. Some of you have had a person in your life that was that authority kind of a figure. You know, they, you, there was somebody that you had a lot of respect for. And it might have been a teacher or you know, a professor at a college or it might have been maybe even a police officer or something like that. It may have been like an aunt or uncle you just had a lot of respect for. Her. They were somebody in authority over you in some way, shape, or form. And then they took advantage of you. And somewhere in all that mess, they, they made you feel like it was all your fault, not their fault, or what happened. You know, we lived in a messed up world, don't we? I don't know if you've heard about this TikTok challenge going around. It's at home with us this past week. We've been praying um, for a little guy who was hurt by it. Um, it's called the Skullbreaker Challenge. This is TikTok. I don't even know what TikTok is. I just heard this was going on, okay? He's like, I don't know. I don't know what TikTok is, but I never watched the thing. But, so I looked it up. There's this Skullbreaker Challenge. So, so here's what the challenge is. A couple of your buddies or distant buddies, or not your close friends, because close friends would never do this. They, they come up to you and say, hey, you want to learn this new dance? I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. And so, so they stay in line. So picture two guys next to me or two gals, whatever you want to go, right? And so that what they do is they jump up, right? And he says, see, this is what you do. I'm like, okay. And so then you're ready to jump up with them, and you think that they're going to jump and show you the next move. And when you jump, they don't jump, and they kick out your legs from underneath you so that there's nothing you can do to stop yourself from falling except crushing your skull. Or if you're fortunate enough, you get your elbow back there that you don't hit your, crush your skull, but you crush your elbow then. Terrible. Man, who does that kind of stuff, right? People are so, yeah, just like so hurtful. And they hurt you and, and, and you're like, why would you choose to do that, you know? I had a friend I was building a, a relationship with this guy. This is years back and I thought it was one of his friendships. We had a lot of things in common and started getting together for lunch and stuff like that and and then we started getting together as couples, you know, and we're like, wow, these are cool people. It's like, we're just going to be friends. They were in our small group. We we're like, man, this is great. This is awesome, right? This went on for a couple of years. You're building this great relationship with this couple and, and had no idea. Behind the scenes, he had this buddy pastor that was looking for a job. And so he was undermining the ministry we had so that he could get his buddy in there as the pastor. And that's what happened. Who betrayed you? Who has hurt you? And it's hard to forgive, isn't it? You know, Jesus was preaching to his disciples one day, and he said this. He said, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. Things will happen. It's simply impossible that they won't because we live in a broken and fallen world, and it's messed up. And people will stumble and they'll fall and they'll hurt people and they'll let people down. And sometimes it's downright down intentional and other times it's not. We hurt somebody and we didn't even know we did it. And yet they were hurt and they think we know we did it and we didn't know we did it. And people will lie to us and steal from us and betray us and let us down. And then Jesus gave this warning. He said this, he said, so watch yourselves. Watch you, that you're not the one doing it. Watch that you don't do it because we often hurt others. And things will happen. So, if, not, not if, but when, when they do, he goes on and he gives us some instructions. And here's his instructions. He says this, if your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. Don't you love that? That's like, wait a minute, really? Like you want me to rebuke? Yeah, because I want you to rebuke you. I want you to tell them that they've hurt you. I want you to tell them that they've offended you. I want you to talk about it. Don't pretend it didn't happen. 
you got to deal with it. Why? Because if we are followers of Jesus Christ, we are called to keep each other accountable. We want to do better, right? Right? For following Jesus, we want to do better in life. So guess what? So we're, we're giving permission to others. When we say, I'm a Christian, I'm a following Jesus, we're giving permission of others to say, this isn't right in your life. This is something you need to work on. You know, you said this thing or you did this thing and you've hurt me. That's what we're doing. Jesus said, we got to fix this. Why? Because we're following Jesus. So when we mess up, we need a brother or sister in Christ to come into our lives to say, hey, listen, can we just chat a little bit? Like, yeah, sure, what's up? Hey, you know, the other day you said this and maybe you didn't mean it that way, but I took it this way. Is this what you meant? And, and you say, oh no, oh my goodness, not, that's not what I meant at all. And you can fix it. It's all done. It's all over with. Okay, well, wonderful. Or you could say, yeah, I actually did. We need to talk about it. And then, and then you have a conversation. The goal is to reconcile. The goal is to fix it. Why? Because you've been hurt and we want to make that right. We want to fix it because we want to fix the relationship. Just like we do with God. When we've done something to offend God, and guess what? We do that every single day. That's why daily accountable to accountability to God is so important because when we've done something that is not right in God's eyes we need to reconcile that we need to fix it so we need to go to him and say hey I messed up I'm sorry can, can we fix this can we talk you know Jesus goes on he says this and he says if, if if they if they repent forgive them so if they yeah they said they realize they're like oh yeah okay I'm, I'm sorry I didn't realize that can we fix this right then let it go. Don't hold it against them. Release them from that, okay? And how many times do we do this? Because that's probably what the disciples were thinking because that's what they, you know, they, there was, we always minimize things, right? Okay, how, but how much, like, what's the least amount that I got to forgive them, right? And so Jesus just throws it out there and he says, even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, Jesus says you must forgive them. Now, when they hit eight, that's it. It's oh, okay, it's oh, no. He said, look, there's no limit. When they come to you and they say, listen, I'm sorry. I know I did this earlier today and I did it again and I did it again. And, there, and there's a sincere repentance. Then he's like, you know what? Then you forgive them. Now, I'm not sure about you, but I want to say, really? Like, you really want me to forgive them that many times? Like, yeah. Because it might be you on the other side. So yeah, I want you to forgive them. But do you know how much they hurt? Do you know how much damage they did? Yeah. But if they come to you and they ask forgiveness, then you forgive them. So how would you respond to that? If you're, you're there with Jesus and he's saying, look, I, no matter how much they hurt you, and then they hurt you again, and then they hurt you again, and then they hurt you again. If they come to you and they ask forgiveness. So here's the apostles' response. This is what they said. They said, so increase our faith. Isn't that interesting? Now, like, there's no way we could do this, which is basically what they're saying. They're like, Look, we don't have the faith to do that. So God, Jesus, increase our faith. Because it's so hard when you've been lied to, when you've been stolen from, when your character's been maligned. It's hard. It's easy to talk about forgiveness. It's not easy to give it. I had developed a friendship years back with a guy, um, similar thing. <laughs> we were developing a friendship and uh, we got together as couples and we're getting to know each other pretty well. Um, big trust factor, you know, you start trusting each other. And um, had no idea what was being said about me when he wasn't with me. And he began, began to undermine my leadership. And his ads going on behind the scenes, had no idea. So when it hit, it was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you've been doing that all these years. And uh, in the meantime, had to deal with not one not two, but three 
right about the same time, really serious sin issues where I had to do what Jesus just said, if your brother sins, and it wasn't against me, but it was technically because, you know, you're part of the church. All that. And I had to go and I had to confront that. And honestly, all three of them went bad. And all this at the same time, you know. And, and then what happens is people walk away because if, if, if you're not in a place where you're walking with God and someone comes to you and confronts you on that, it doesn't go well. It just doesn't go well. And, and guess what? So, so people walk away. And then guess what happens is, is people look at you and say, so what are you doing wrong? Because you just pushed all these people away. It's like, no, I'm just doing what Jesus told me to do. But they don't know that. Because I'm never one to publicize somebody else's mess ups. I don't want somebody publicizing mine. I'd rather help you struggle through what you're struggling through as quietly as possible. Why? Because we don't want to broadcast our mess, do we? But people don't see that. And it has a ripple effect. You've been hurt. Somebody did something to you and somebody said something about you. Somebody lied to you. And it's hard to get over. Jesus, when he was given the Sermon on the Mount, which is his most probably famous sermon, which is not just the Beatitudes, because if you're familiar with Sermon on the Mount, like the, the Blessed Are, you know, the, those things, right? Um, that's like just the beginning. He's just like warming up, because it goes on for chapters. And, and if you're watching The Chosen, by the way, that's what's coming up next. Okay, so if you're not going to catch it in the movie, it's going to come up in December when they launch season three. But the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus does something that's really radical. And, and in that, he, he says, he gives them a contrast. He says, and this is how he starts. He says, you've heard that it was said, right? And that, that's what he does. You've heard that it was said. And you've heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. That's a good one. Like, like, I can get into that, right? I love, like, if you're my friend and all that, I love you, right? But if you're my enemy, I just want to, mm, you know, right? Because you hurt me, and I don't want to have anything to do with you, right? And, you know, and we, we can relate to that, right? Because today we live in, today, oh my goodness, we live in such a volatile culture, right? I mean, I talked to you about the TikTok challenge, and, um, but we do. It's just like, it's crazy how... You don't even know what to say or do or even think anymore because it's going to be wrong. Like, it just is. It's a volatile culture, right? Um, it, remember, it wasn't that long ago where it was the whole um, Me Too movement. Like, everybody's saying, oh, yeah, I, I was too. Like, 60 years ago, this happened to me. And, and, and that was all like, that's great. People are starting to, to tell their story of, of how they were abused or something like that. But only certain people are allowed to do that. I don't know if you remember the actor Brendan Fraser. Remember that? Anybody remember that name, Brendan Fraser? He was in The Mummy. He did The Blast from the Past. That was a cool movie. There's some movies from the 80s, right? Well, he came out, and he said, guess what? This happened to me. And he was blackballed by Hollywood for doing that, at least for a few years. He's, he's making, he's actually supposed to release a new film recently. Um, I was like, wow, wh why? Why is it wrong for him? But it's okay for everybody else, you know? Candace Cameron Burr, how many of you used to watch Full House? How many of you will admit they used to watch Full House, okay? Um, and, uh, and I know it's other because now there's Fuller House or whatever anyway. But she does a lot of movies. She does like the Hallmarky kind of movies, you know, all the love stories and all that kind of stuff. Um, up there with some of the other people because we watch some of the Hallmark movies. Anyway, she made a decision recently to leave the network she's been a part of to join the Great American Family Network because they are promoting family values. And Christian values. And she's like, you know, I, I just don't want to be a part of that anymore. I want to I be a part of something that, like, they're going to stand on some values that aren't going to change, okay? So I'm making a choice, a career choice, to move from here to here. And guess what Hollywood did to her? They blasted her. I didn't even know this was going on because I don't watch, like, I don't read the tabloids all that. I read some news articles and this came up and I was like, wow. Oh my goodness, this is really going on. Poor, pray for her. Like she's like, she's getting blasted by Hollywood because she made a choice. And what's crazy is, which, which I just, it's impossible. It's like, 
why are some allowed to have their values and push their values on everybody else, but you're not allowed to have your own values? Right? Does, does that make any sense? It's like, we, I'm okay. You have your values. That's okay. You believe what you want and all that kind of stuff. But can I believe what I want? Can I value and talk about my values? And what a messed up culture. And so, you know, here she is. We live in a culture that's just creating hate and division and strife and all this kind of stuff where, where it's like we want to make enemies. And you want to lash back. And so Jesus goes on and he says this. He says, but I tell you to love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Like, I don't want to do that. That's hard. Love those who hurt me. Pray for those who hurt me. And not pray that God like brings fire down from heaven because that I could do. That's like... Right? Did you ever like want to just do that? Right? I the conversations I have in my car sometimes. If anybody had a microphone in here, something happened the other day, and I'm driving home like, fine. And that's how you know if you only knew. You know, right? And I and God, yeah, I know God hears that and all that kind of stuff. But it's like, do you ever do that? Right? Because you're like you're angry, your situation, a person, whatever like this. And and Jesus comes along and says, I want you to pray for them. So Candace Cameron Burr, I was like, wow, I didn't you know, realize all this was happening. Um, she's living out her values. Again, she's just living out. I just, I made a choice. Well, my, my values, okay, can I live my, by my values, right? And um, I, was re- I was impressed by her response. So I want to read it for you. Listen to this. She said this. She said, um, I, would, I would like to address my comments on the Great American Families Program as reported in the Wall Street Journal. Big stuff, okay, right? All of you know me. You know beyond a question, I have great love and affection for all people. It's like, look, I love everybody, right? Okay? It absolutely breaks my heart that anyone would ever think I intentionally want to offend and hurt anyone. It saddens me that the media is often seeking to divide us even, even around a subject as comforting and merry as Christmas movies. These are about Christmas movies. That's what she makes. She just wants to have values in them, right? She goes on, um, but given the toxic climate in our culture right now, I shouldn't be surprised. We need Christmas more than ever. She goes on to talk about her faith in Christ and how, man, we need Christ more than ever. And why, if I hold up my values, do you take that as hatred? When it's not hatred, I love you. I just want to be able to have my values too. You've been hurt. I've been hurt. And yet God tells us to forgive. I want you to forgive. He's saying, let go of the grudge. And I know it hurts. I do. He, I mean, he's been there. He knows. And each time we're reminded of that, it opens up that wound, doesn't it? And it's like, Phew. But I want you to forgive him. And why do we do that? And Jesus goes on. He says this, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. You see, because if we follow Jesus, then things are different now. We're God's child, and as a child, we reflect the image of our Father. The Apostle Paul put it another way. He said this. He said, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. You were forgiven. And that's why Jesus tells it so critical. For if you forgive other people, he says, when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. You mean it's conditional? Yeah, that's what he's saying. If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. And then he goes on even further and he issues a warning. Listen to this warning. Ready for this? He says this, <laughs> but if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive yours. We have to forgive. It's not a choice. It's a, it, it's a, we have to. If we follow Jesus Christ, we have to. But you don't know what happened. You don't know what I went through. I, I know, but he does. And he says, I want you to forgive. Now, before you get too frustrated, because I hear stuff like this and I'm like, 
I can't do this. I can't do this. This is like you're asking too much, right? So let's clarify some things, okay? So first, let's talk about what forgiveness is not, okay? Forgiveness is not forgetting. See, often people say, well, you got to forgive or forget. No, you don't. Jesus never said that. He said, forgive them. Did he say forget it? No. You can't forget that it happened. You can't just pretend it didn't happen. You can't justify saying, well, it's okay because it wasn't that bad or it wasn't wrong or changed wrong from right or right from, you know. You don't have to be friend, Facebook friends with this person anymore. You don't. Okay? So some of you are going on there, really? I could just go, yeah, just unfriend them. It's okay. Jesus never said you had to be their friend. He didn't say to forget it. Right? So unfriend them, that's fine. You don't have to send them a birthday card every year. Okay? Just let it go. If they betrayed you, they, they took away your trust, right? You don't want to be in a place where you let that keep happening. That's wrong. If, they, if you can't trust them, why would you trust them again? Right? Now, can that be part of the process of reconciliation? Sure, that's a whole other story. But we're not called to be a doormat to somebody and say, yeah, they're just going to hurt me and I'm going to go back and get more. No. You don't let it. If there's abuse happening, you don't. You, you, you walk away. You can forgive and create boundaries. It's okay. Somebody has stolen, um, stolen money from us. And, um, and in that process, destroyed a lot of relationships. A lot of relationships, you know. And uh, tried, tried the instructions by Jesus, uh, Matthew 18. You, know, you go to your brother and you can say, confront them. And um, wanted nothing to do with it. Nothing. Cut it off. Cut us off, right? So you're like, well, okay, so you can't go that way. So you try to write a letter. Say, okay, we're going to try this again. Right? Nothing. No response, no nothing. So what do you do? Can I just forget it never happened? Just go on like life is normal? No. So when we see this person, guess what? How's the weather? Fine. Okay. Why? There can be no relationship when there's no reconciliation. Just like Jesus. Okay? If we've sinned against God and we don't confess that and we don't fix that, there's not a reconciliation in a relationship. We're separated from God. There's a separation in our relationship. Why? Because we've done something that we've still not made right with God yet. We can forgive. But we can still set boundaries because we're not going to forget it. It's too embedded in our brain. Second thing, forgiveness is not fair. We want fair, right? We want justice. Somebody did something to us, let's, let's make it right, right? I mean, we like the Old Testament law, right? That was great, an eye for an eye, right? Don't you feel like that? It's like, man, they took out my eye, I just want to take out their eye. And that was great. And if you're Jewish, you, you understood that. And, and Jesus comes along and says, ah, I got another idea. It's like, no, but I like this, you know, they hurt me, I want to hurt them back, right? Here's the thing, we wouldn't want it to be fair. We wouldn't. Listen to what the psalmist wrote. He said this, he said, he, God, does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. Now think about that for a moment. The psalmist is telling us, you know, there are times that you hurt people, there are times that you messed up, there are times that you did something wrong, and it's not only what you did wrong, but the, the, the hard thing about when we mess up, when we sin, right, is it has a ripple effect. And we don't even know what that is. Because we don't see all that. We just know that this person was hurt, but that person then hurts other people. And it's a ripple effect. And the psalmist is telling us, aren't you glad that God is not fair? Aren't you glad that God is not paying you back for what you did? But look at what God has done. The psalmist goes on, he says, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the earth, east is from the west, so far as he has removed our transgressions from us. God sent his son to die. It's his gift. It's his grace to us. It's his mercy. The second and the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixteenth and the hundredth time we do it. It's God's mercy that he is not fair to us. 
He gives us grace. I've been forgiven. For what? For, you don't know all my sins, okay? I've been forgiven. Lying and stealing and cheating and hurting people. And, and you, you've been forgiven. Unless you're perfect, because if you're perfect, that's awesome. But you probably won't feel comfortable around here because we're not perfect, right? What forgiveness is? Forgiveness is this. Forgiveness is giving others what God gave you. That's it. That's the gospel. We give the gospel. It's at the heart of what Jesus did. I forgive you. I mean, we live in a culture that is desperate to say, listen, I just want you to accept me just the way I am, even if it's wrong, and I just want you to say it's okay what I'm doing is wrong. And Jesus said, no, sin is sin. Do you know what sin is? Sin in the Greek word literally means to miss the mark. That's what it means. It means, you know, you're shooting at it and you're missed. God in his holiness is so holy that we continually miss the mark. We, we don't make it. That's sin. It, it's, that's why Jesus went to the cross. The gospel, I, I've been forgiven. And if you want to be forgiven, you just take it to Jesus. John wrote this. This is so great. If you don't know this verse, you should memorize this verse. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. All we got to do is confess it. That's the gospel, man. It, it's, it's receiving the grace of forgiveness. But it's not this, I got Jesus and I'm all good. It's I got Jesus, now I now forgive you. Forgiveness flows through us because of Jesus Christ. And we give that forgiveness to other people who don't know Jesus. Why? So hopefully they will know Jesus. It's just going with the flow, man. That, that as God has forgiven us, we now are able to forgive other people. And the more they see God's grace, the more, man, Lord willing, they respond to that. How can you forgive me? Because I've been forgiven, so I can forgive you. That's why. That will blow people's minds. Is it easy? No. It's hard. We need to ask what the disciples did, right? Because what? It takes faith to forgive. It takes faith to forgive. That's why his followers asked him, can you increase our faith? Because it's hard to forgive. What's the Lord's Prayer, right? Some of you have this memorized, right? And it's Jesus taught us, this is how I want you to pray. Okay, it's not like a formula or anything like that. But it's, and that's part of the whole Sermon on the Mount too, right? And he says, what? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Okay, you're just awesome. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Just like it is in heaven. We want what's going on up there to happen down here. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. Our sins, as what? As we forgive others. Every day. So yes, did they hurt you? Did they betray you, lie to you, steal from you? But see, when we hold on to that, what happens is, it's not hurting them. They've moved on. It hurts us. And when we forgive, it may not fix them. But forgiveness sets us free. That's what it does. You're free. Will you forget it? No. Actually, that's the beauty of it. We don't forget it. We can remember that that's where I used to be and that's where I was stuck, but I'm not there anymore because grace has set me free from that. Now, can you say you're forgiven to someone who may not want it? Yeah. May it not impact them? Yes. But maybe it will. Remember, Jesus was on the cross and he's dying on the cross for all of our sins. And what's his response? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And here the people are walking by. You have the Jewish leaders that are spitting on them, mocking them, right? You have the Roman soldiers. That's another day on the job. Another person are just killing but they're watching because they that's their job. They've got to make sure this guy's going to die. And here he is, and he's saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. 
don't know if you remember this, but the one soldier, when it's all over, he looks at Jesus. And he says, surely this was the Son of God. That had impact his life. The question is not how much forgiveness can we give. The question is how much freedom do we want to experience? Because Jesus came to set the prisoners free. He came to free us from that burden of holding on to those grudges. And we make a choice in faith to forgive. How free do you want to be? That's how much we have to forgive. Father, thank you so much for Jesus Christ. Thank you for going to the cross and setting us free. You have released us. When we put our, our faith in you, when we grasp how much you have given to us, that we need a Savior. You set us free, not just from the consequences of sin, but you set us free from this burden we carry because we could truly say, I am forgiven by a God who is so gracious and so merciful. Lord, help us now to give that to others. Lord, for those who are listening or, or watching that have never come to the cross, have never come to that point where they say, God, I need your forgiveness, may they do that right now and trust in your son, Jesus Christ. May they experience for the first time in their lives the freedom that comes from knowing they are now your child. They are set free from everything they have ever done and ever will do against you. For every time they have missed the mark, and every time they will, you have set us free. Lord, for those of us who have done that, but we're holding on to other people who have put us back in bondage by the, what they have done to us, may today be the day that we set them free. And not for what it may do for them, but Lord, that it may free us from what has been hanging over us for so long. Help us in the times that those memories come back. That we don't remember the pain and the struggle, but we remember the grace that you give us. And we remember that we are free because of Jesus Christ. Lord, as we go into this Thanksgiving season, may we be so grateful not just for the things we have and the people in our lives, but that no matter what our culture goes through, no matter what kind of uprisings may stir and rise, no matter what kind of hatred goes on around us, that, Lord, we are free because we chose to be set free by your Son, Jesus. So thank you for being our God. Thank you for the many blessings. But thank you most of all for the freedom that we have in Jesus Christ. And so Lord, we give this to you in his name. Amen.
the shadows, bound for the gallows, a dead man walking, to love came calling, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, six feet under. That I was too far gone for everything I've done wrong. Yeah, I'm the one who dug this grave, but you called my name. You called my name. I thought that I was too far gone for everything I've done. I'm the one who took this grave, but you called my name, you called Watches with the heart of darkness, going to blows with your fear and garden. Never going to the stripped away. The thought of you has gotta die to change. In the morning you gon' need an answer. Ain't nobody gonna change the standard. It's not enough to just feel the flame. You gotta burn your old self away. Hold on tight.
wishing can be right And all you ever do is fight But there's a reason that the road is long It takes some time to make your courage strong Hold on tight a little longer Work don't kill you, make you stronger Get back up, cause it's a holler You can't change without a fallout It's gonna hurt, but don't you slow down Get back up, cause it's a holler When the wolves come and hunt me down I will face them all and stand my ground. Cause there's a fire burning deep. They will see my strength in this love I found. Whoa! Hold on tight a little longer. Work don't kill you, make you stronger. Get back up, cause it's a hard